If you're, as an actor, someone who's conflict avoidant, it's going to really narrow the, the number of characters you can play. You'll be, end up being really pigeonholed to just one type of character. Listen, I know a few people who have that concern, who have had to let go. If I'm seen to be fighting all out, like really committing, what if somebody judges me? What if somebody laughs at me? Because it had happened to her before in the past as a kid and yeah, they're based in the past and yet they have a hold on us in the here and now. They limit our ability to be free to be and free to act. And that's the thing to keep looking for. Where are you experiencing any kind of restriction or limitation on your ability to be free to be and free to act? What's in the way? This brings me to what I wanted to talk a little bit tonight. And in a way, what I want to talk about tonight is also tied into what we've been discussing around these kinds of complaints. What I wanted to talk about tonight was the difference between standards and ideals versus principles and values. I'm going to suggest tonight that principles and values are going to be more useful. By uncollapsing standards and ideals with principles and values, it will give you access to integrity and to your ability to be and your ability to act. What tends to happen is if life doesn't fit our picture of what our standards and ideals are, then we start to invalidate life. Does that make sense? We make it wrong. We make things wrong. We make people wrong when they don't live up to our standards and ideals. Don't we? There's no possibility or flexibility because your standards and ideals tend to be fixed. Again, if life, people, the industry, situations don't live up to your standards or ideals, we make them wrong. And we also begin to experience struggle and effort. So anywhere where you're experiencing struggle or effort, I want you to consider that what you've got going on there is some kind of standard or ideal for how things should be. One of the ways for you to figure out whether or not you've got a bunch of standards or ideals is to just notice how often you use the word should. Notice. I want you to just start to notice what some of your shoulds are, or your shouldn'ts, or your musts, or your mustn'ts about yourself, maybe about acting, about the industry, about life, about your work, about your relationships, about your body. My body should be like this. It shouldn't be like that. And notice the impact. Just start to get present to the impact. God knows when I got this, I realized I had a whole bunch of shoulds about my acting. I had a whole bunch of shoulds about my career. I should be further along. I should have done things differently when I was in my 20s. My work should be exceptional all the time. And if it's not, that's eh, not really worth putting out. The work should be excellent. It doesn't become a practice anymore. It becomes a result all the time. Does that make sense? It becomes, it's no longer about the process of ex the exploration of excellence. It becomes about measuring up to something. Now, obviously, yes, we can look at great acting and go, okay, that's an example of great acting. But, you know, as soon as you also start to try to compare yourself to that all the time, that if you're not at that level, that there's something wrong with you, you're invalidating it. You're turning it into a standard or an ideal. Because here's the other thing too, that I want you guys to consider is that standards and ideals are all based in the past. This happened in a class the other, the other day. You know, someone got up and did a scene. Two, two people were actually doing the same scene. And one person got up and did the scene and did a great job. Did a really fantastic job with it. And what happened was the other actress immediately started comparing herself to what the other girl had just done. Now she had a standard. Does that make sense? And she immediately started to invalidate herself, going, oh, I'm not going to measure up to that. And so when it you know, came time to, for her to get up, she didn't want to go. 
She didn't want to get up and do her scene because she was so concerned about not measuring up to that standard that she just created in her head based on what had just happened in the past. That's not coming from a principle or a value. That actress that I was working with the other week that I, I talked about in class who had a big story going on about you know the pressure that she was under to do a good job. When we disappeared that story, when we got it out of the way, all of a sudden there was all this freedom and ownership in her work. She wanted to watch her work back, which before she didn't want to do because she had some kind of standard in her mind and the work was not going to live up to it. So all of a sudden there's a possibility for ownership in what you're doing. There's no invalidation of what you're doing because who cares? It doesn't mean anything anyway. You know, so it, it's the same in life. Someone doesn't kind of measure up sometimes, well, have a conversation with them. But see what could be possible in terms of like come at it from, again, from your principles and values of what you want in a relationship, but not from that standard of, or ideal that is going to leave them being wrong, where there's no possibility for them to show up in any other way than not measuring up. So what would be another way of approaching it if you were coming more from a place of principles and values. Well, the result, another word for the result is the ideal. Do you know what I mean? The ideal of how you think in your head, the scene should look. Can you hear it? Should look that way. And so, of course, you know, um, when you have that result in mind, it's probably not going to live up to expectations. I think one of the things that opened up for me about this was that I could just take action. You know, I could just do stuff for the fun of it, for why not, um, for the joy of it, for the exploration, for the process, to, you know, to, to see what I can discover. And I don't have to get fixated on the result. I, don't, I can let that go. Let's see if we can let go of some shoulds tonight about how your work should be or shouldn't be. And let's instead, what are some, just I want you guys to just throw a couple of values or principles that we could come from tonight. Fun. Fun, great, what else? What else could we create? Depth. Depth, I love that, great. Freedom, freedom, freedom in the work, love it. Authenticity. Authenticity, yes, yeah, what else? Somebody else said something? Curiosity. Curiosity, yeah, getting really curious about the other person. Anything else? Discovery. Discovery, I love that. Discover the scene, openness, being open to possibility, open to what the, your scene partner is giving you. What else? What's another principle of value? Holding nothing back. I love that. Holding nothing back. Being fully self-expressed. Those are all possibilities. If we're not coming from the standards and ideals of the result of how we think it should be, that's all available to you tonight. Okay, and I'm not saying it like, again, it's not a standard or an ideal, like it has to be that way. If it's not, it's fine. You will live. <laughs> you will survive. And life will go on and it will all be okay. And it doesn't mean anything. So we might as well have a lot of fun.